Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I'm at the schoolyard next to my house and it is a crisp blue sky day, late fall day today. Uh, temps just above freezing at 33 degrees according to UAV forecast. Honestly, it feels a little bit warmer than that. Uh, but I have the uh, Autel Evo Nano Plus with me today. Uh, that temperature is just above the recommended temp that uh, this drone should can fly at or is recommended to fly at. So we shouldn't have any problems there. Uh, but the exciting news is, is that I just got this back from Autel today, Autel's uh, warranty service. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole story of my saga with the Autel Evo Nano Plus, but uh, I first flew this drone in this very spot on January 2nd of this year. So we're nearly a year later, not quite 11 months later since I made that first flight. And I've been through a lot with this little guy, but one of the things that never worked right, uh, well, it, it had the, the and I, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, probably not, uh, but it had the wrong uh, isolators uh, mounts for the gimbal. They were faced, if you look at those bottoms, they were faced downward instead of uh, sideways like they are now. So uh, Autel took care of that. They put those new gimbal isolators on there. That was a small thing in that the shakes that I saw in the early video, they seem to have cured them with firmware, so I wasn't having those kind of problems. But now we know that we're on, they're on their right, so that should help. But the bigger problem for me was the downward sensors. And what I was getting was a lot of faulting. The drone would be way up in the air and it would think that it was had something, you know, one meter below it or such, you know, it would give me those kind of uh, warnings and readings. Uh, but even more concerning than that is that when it would land, uh, sometimes it would land normally, but other times, man, it would hit hard. Like it didn't know where the ground was. And uh, so I got to the point that I would only land it over grass because, I, I mean, I'm on pavement right or on uh, uh, concrete right now on a sidewalk uh, I got to where I wouldn't land on those kind of things because of that and the other thing that that affected is that every time it would go into landing mode it would say unsafe landing environment uh, and I'd have to force it into landing mode uh, and so I was never able to get a precision landing and so forth uh, my friend Ron Brown he is, gets precision landings all the time uh, so I got it back today and that's what we're going to look at. We're going to test it out. We're going to see, we'll pay particular interest to see if we see any kind of issues with the gimbal as far as shaking or tilted horizon or anything like that. I don't expect to, but that's what we want, what we're looking for. But more importantly, I want to see that I have no more of those downward sensor errors. Now, what's common with uh, many drones is the, uh, the obstacle avoidance sensors. Sometimes if it's faced into the sun, you can get a false reading. The original uh, DJI Air 2, I don't see them so much on the Air 2S, but I remember the original Air 2, you would get those that falsing occasionally. Uh, and I've seen that on this guy as well. Not so concerned about that. That's something that you understand and it's just, the, the obstacle avoidance seems to work well. And in fact, we might mess around with that and try that out a little bit here too. Uh, so anyway, let's quit messing around. Let's get this drone in the air. And, uh, and I'm excited to see and to show you guys uh, how the Autel Evo Nano Plus uh, should work when it's fully functional. And thank you for, to uh, Autel uh, for taking care of it. And, their customer service, uh, I can say, was very painless. Uh, I, it was, I did it all through email, and uh, the turnaround was very quick, etc. So anyway, let's quit messing around. Let's get this drone in the air. Okay, I've got the Autel Sky app fired up. Uh, let's take a quick look at uh, our safety menu. And yeah, max altitude, 120, no limit on distance. Return to home height, 36 meters. That's actually a little higher than what we actually need. But you know what? Let's just... Well, heck, let's drop it down. Ah, I'm going to leave it there. 36 meters it is. <laughs> uh, anyway, got that going. Uh, anyway, uh, so signal loss, we went on a return to home. 
it's not asking for a calibration. I think I'm going to do one real quick, a compass calibration, just uh, because it, it did travel to uh, Bothell, Washington. I don't know if they flew it there or not. So let's do a quick compass calibration. Autel always has that extra step on the compass calibration where you hold the drone sideways and spin it around. But, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, it looks like we're in good shape there. Uh, and, the, and it says safe to fly. So that's the other thing that I've noticed here is that previously the drone would always, it would take a while, uh, it would, I'm trying to remember exactly what it said, something about gimbal, uh, you know, orienting or something along those lines and it took it a while but it, it immediately is saying safe to fly. Uh, so that's the other thing. Let's look at the about page. I do want to show you the software package here so you can see the app version uh, and firmware is 1.6.5. So uh, anyway, just letting you know what that is. Uh, okay, uh, I, see, uh, I see no reason not to take off and let's see well no we need let's look at that camera menu we're in auto we want to be in 4k 30 frames per second so that's exactly where i want it to be uh, we'll start recording once we take off so let's go ahead and take off here let's do an auto takeoff on the app And there it is. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, start recording. And it's, you know, showing uh, obstacle avoidance on the tail. It's probably pointed towards my, uh, my uh, Chevy Tahoe. So let's start recording now. So we're recording. Let's uh, turn it around and bring it in here. Yeah, it's looking good. And, uh, you know, it's, it's facing into the sun right now. So, like, I'm, it's not wanting to come forward because of obstacle avoidance. So, clearly, I'm going to say the obstacle avoidance on this thing is working much, much better. Uh, and and the, the bottom sensor is perfect. In other words, the height of the drone is 1.2 or 1.3 meters off the ground. And the bottom sensor is saying 1.2 meters. It, didn't, it wasn't like that before. So uh, let me pick it up here, and we're going to uh, we're going to point it the other way, and uh, and we're going to do our droney. So uh, let me drop that camera a little bit, and you know I, I'm I'm seeing an improvement in the OA sensors already. I mean it's perfect. The distance to uh, to where I'm at here, I, I mean yeah, it's it's definitely working a lot better. And look at that bottom sensor. It's saying bottom 1.6 meters, and if you look on the, uh, the little uh, radar diagram there, the attitude indicator, it's saying height is 1.6 meters. They, it agrees perfectly, and that hasn't been the case in the past. Uh, so anyway, let me, uh, that's, that's a really good sign. So, uh, so let's uh, drop that gimbal down and uh, reverse and up now, reverse and up. And typical of DJI, it's, uh, or excuse me, typical of Autel, uh, it's, uh, it's nice and smooth here. And I let go of the back stick and I'm just going up. And, uh, and let's just take it on a little, little flight around. I'm picking that camera back up. Oh gosh, sorry about that, guys. I said DJI instead of Autel. Uh, but at any rate, uh, there we are, right next to the cell phone tower. Now that looks like the cell phone tower is really close. I have eyes on the drone. It's, it's actually a fair ways away from that cell phone tower. But it's amazing how the camera can make things look closer than they, than they really are. Let's, uh, let's move in on that so you guys can have a look here. This, uh, this cell phone tower is interesting and I, and, and I realize that looks really close. I actually have eyes on the drone. We're not, we're not that, it's not that close to it at all. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting to see that. And speed mode wise, I always forget here, you have to go into the app to, to check speed mode. So I'm assuming we are in normal mode here. Just getting you a look at that cell phone tower and, uh, Let's uh, let's go out to the corner here, out here, and uh, and let's do a uh, 
uh, we'll do a return to home and we'll see if we can get a precision landing and see how it handles a, a landing. And let's see, how fast are we going? We are at ten, about 10 meters per second. So yeah, we're definitely in normal mode. I think that's top speed in normal mode. Okay, that's good. We are, uh, the drone is facing away from its home point. Let's hit uh, return to home on the app. And return to home landing, we're gonna slide. And uh, let's just see how it does. Let's see if this guy will, uh, will get us a precision landing. And it, you know, it took that command immediately. Let me drop the gimbal down so we can see. You can see where I'm standing down here. Uh, you know, I'm telling you, I am seeing a, uh, I, I don't know if it's just me. Yeah, see, it never would have done that before. It would have, it would have told me previously that, uh, that it was unsafe to land. So it's coming down here. And, uh, and let's see if it finds that landing pad. And let's see, more importantly, let's see uh, how, if, if it lands hard. And I'm looking at the orientation of the drone. That's not how it was oriented when we took off, but, or no, maybe it was, yes it was. Yeah, so it's seeing the ground. It's not gonna hit the pad, but it's definitely seeing the ground. It's, uh, it's blowing up a leaf there. And you know what? That was perfect. I mean, it landed, uh, and I'm sure uh, you guys saw that on the Action 2 camera. I'm going to look. Yeah, you were able to see that. Uh, and it, uh, it was a perfect soft landing there. So that was great. That's exactly what you wanted to do. Okay, let's get it back up in the air again. And, and by the way, it stopped recording. And we'll just mess around with some other stuff here. Maybe we'll take a look at the, uh, at the OA and some other things. I can't tell you how pleased I am with that flight. That was awesome. Uh, it's like it's like a whole new drone. So I'll tell I appreciate you taking care of the problems I had with this guy. Okay, let's do a uh, let's do a manual takeoff this time. Both sticks down and in, and then up on that left stick. And I'm gonna uh, go up and and hover it there. You know, just go straight up, and so it gets a good look at that landing pad, and we'll see if it uh, we'll see if it's able to hit it again. My friend Ron Brown, he uh, he's able to get precision landings with his uh, Nano Plus often. So uh, anyway, let's back this guy up, get it out over the field here a little bit, and uh, let's go in and look. I want to go in and check on the uh, on the speed menu, and I'm trying to remember. I, uh, you know, I'm sad to say I don't mess around in, uh, in this app enough. So flight mode, yeah, we're in standard. So I'm gonna, I wanna go into uh, uh, Ludicrous and pitch speed on the gimbal. I'm going to, I'm gonna turn that up a little bit because it was a little slower than I would have liked. Let's go up to 75. And aircraft turn speed, I think, uh, is fine. Let's go into ludicrous mode. And obstacle avoidance may be invalid. That makes sense. Yep. I get that. And we are in speed priority. If you look down there at the bottom, it's in speed priority rather than uh, video priority. So that's what I want. I want to be able to see how fast this guy will go. So... Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's do another. Uh, let's well, let's start recording number one, and uh, and let's uh, let's go ahead and back this guy up. And yeah, I can tell a difference already in in uh, speed. One of the things I've noticed about this particular drone is that it doesn't. When you put two different inputs, in other words, uh, when you're when you're inputting an increase in altitude at the same time as uh, uh, forward or reverse movement, it tends to affect uh, both. In other words, both of them are slower than if you do it individually on their own. So, uh, so let's go out over the top of Discovery School here and uh, let's see how fast this guy will go. And I'm just pushing forward on the stick. There's 13 meters per second. Yeah, we're not going to quite hit. Yeah, there was 14. 
Okay, I want to get over the top of the school here. I love this look right here uh, because it gives you, uh, and I'm going to drop the gimbal down just a little. What I like about this is that you have the mountains in the background, you have things in the foreground. It's a good way to test a camera on the drum. You've got, you know, those, that playground equipment that's colorful that's in the foreground. And then in the middle, you know, you've got the trees and the houses there. So, uh, so I'm going to stop recording here for a second and, uh, and we are going to uh, take a picture. So let's flip into picture mode. And again, we're in automatic, so let's, let's, uh, let's take a shot. In fact, I'm going to do that uh, on, the, uh, on the controller here. And we got a shot there. Let's turn the drone a little bit. And we'll get another shot. There's a shot. Again, that's in fully automatic with the, the, the sun is at the drone's back. Okay, we're going to switch back into video mode. Let's start video again. And you know what? I, uh, I got to thinking here. Uh, we, uh, let's, let's take a look at zoom. So uh, we're going to go to two by zoom. And yeah, let me pick up the camera so you get a better shot. I can tell you on the FPV screen that looks really good. Let's kick it into four by zoom. I'm going to kind of move it over to where we are. And I'm going to kick the camera up just a little bit because I want to kind of get that four by zoom on the Bogus Basin Ski Resort up there. Let's click on four. And there's four. And I didn't lift the camera high enough. Uh, but that is Bo Bogus Basin Ski Resort. The I think when you're at the ground part of the resort, in other words, when, when you're at the bottom of the lifts, it's about 5,500 feet above sea level. The top of that mountain, I think, is about 7,800, something like that, above uh, sea level. You take the chair lifts up. So uh, anyway, let's go back to one by, back out, and you can see the difference that made. Uh, pretty interesting. Okay, so now let's see, we got 57% battery. Let's quit messing around. Let's, uh, let's try a little uh, speed test here. We're going to go back out to the uh, far corner of the lot here. So I'm just on one stick. I'm going to go uh, full stick forward, dropping the camera down just a little full forward right now. And let's see what this guy accelerates up to. We're at 26 meters high. And there's 12 meters per second. And I'm looking at the drone. It's, it's moving right along, but yeah, we're not hitting the speed we did go in the other direction. And I can hear the drone. This drone makes a little bit more noise than I would say the equivalent uh, of the, uh, like the, the DJI Mini 3. Okay, off the stick. Let's turn around. Let's do the same thing the other direction. And again, we're in ludicrous mode, speed mode. And well, as I'm turning here, you're seeing the gimbal tilt just a tad, but th then it immediately straightens right out. So that, to me, that's perfectly acceptable. I did a really fast yaw there. And I have an aircraft off to uh, my north, but he is way, way up there. Uh, again, you know, I was tell people I think your best uh, sense for manned aircraft is your ears. You hear them long before you uh, see them. But anyway, full stick forward here, back the other direction. And let's see if we can, yeah, we are going a little faster. There's 13. So there must be more wind than I thought. Let's see how quick we can get this guy up to. 13 meters per second. Okay, I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to go, because it seemed like we got going a little bit faster when we headed kind of over towards the school here. So let's grab some altitude and I am, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to let it go for a while. So 46% battery, we're good. Let's go ahead and full stick forward again and let's see, I would love to see this guy get up to that 15 meters per second. And uh, I mean, I'm telling you, there's 14. There is really, I mean, I'm feeling virtually no wind down here. Now, is there wind at a higher altitude? I, I don't know. I'm going to steer us over here. 
This is kind of an interesting lot that I think they're, uh, they're getting ready to do some development in. And then you're going to see, yeah, and the drone, we're just right around 13 meters per second here. And then this next uh, area here, that's a, a big house down there, but this next area is a new development. There's just, there's just so much housing going in, and these are individual homes right here. Uh, but I'm going to swing around. In fact, we're going to go back into normal mode here. Uh, control, I'm sorry, I, 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 I tend to forget. And flight mode, we're going to go back into standard. And uh, yeah, we should be good to go there. Okay, sorry about uh, taking that time. I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to get the drone back in standard. But anyway, I want to show you these, all of these apartment buildings here, a couple years ago weren't there. And that, that shopping center, there's a Kohl's and a uh, Dick's Sporting Goods and stuff there. That's all new. And all these houses, all these apartments you see right here, they're all new. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, it just, uh, it's just amazing how quick they, uh, how quick they do that stuff. So let's bring this guy back to us, and you can see where I'm at off in the distance there. And I see the, uh, we got a little slightly tilted horizon, and there, yeah, there it straightened out. It takes it just a straight, a little, a minute. So in normal mode, you get, uh, it goes right up to that 10 meters per second, which is what it's. That's the top speed in normal mode. And we're bringing the drone directly back to us. And there's something else I want to show you here. And uh, and uh, let's see, yeah, I'm just looking at the top, some of our specs. 21 satellites, so it's grabbing satellites well. Just kind of looking at things. And 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 what the other thing that I will say about Autel is their control system is awesome. Uh, in other words, their range and strength of the controller, I'm going to say is equal to or maybe even better than DJI's OcuSync 3. And it is no question superior to OcuSync 2. The, uh, the, and, and that's just my experience with this drone, but I can tell you uh, your FPV feed is always perfect. I, I, I'm going to say Autel sets the standard in that regard. Okay, I got something else I want to show you down here. I've shown you this uh, this little parking lot before, where the kids at the uh, medical charter school here. Oh yeah, it wants to go into return to home. We're going to cancel that because we're uh, we're very close to home. Uh, but what they, they have, uh, they, they let them paint uh, their individual parking spots. I'm holding the sideways on the stick, and it's, it was, man, it seemed like it was kind of sluggish there. And yeah, there we got a little bit of falsing on the, uh, there's nothing in front of the drone where it's at right now. And we got a, 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 a uh, said something was 5.9 meters in front of it. But here is what I'm going to show you. We're going to get right over the top of it, and we're going to go down and take a good look, and then we'll hit our return to home. So yeah, I went just a little too far. So uh, if you look at that parking spot that's basically in the center there, it says, thank you, Hal. That is my neighbor, and my next door neighbor, he is, whoop, we're pretty darn close to that. I don't want to get too close to that. Uh, but we'll, yeah, let's drop, let's back it up just a little. Uh, but anyway, that is, uh, we can go down here. That is, uh, that is my neighbor, uh, Hal. That is, he's got two dogs. He's got a corgi uh, and uh, what the other dog, I don't know what kind of dog the other little dog is, but he takes, he, he has those dogs and he takes them on walks through the schoolyard here a couple times a day. It was not, it did not go unnoticed by the students here at the school. And so they painted a parking spot just for Hal. And uh, Hal just had his 90th birthday. And by the way, Hal has a drone. 
uh, and he flies a drone. I, I gave Hal a, a drone that was sent to me for review and he, he flies it uh, and, uh, you know, takes his dogs for a walk every day. Anyway, I just thought that was pretty cool. Probably, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and do our return to home here and, uh, and uh, I'm going to do it uh, on the controller right now. I'm going to hold down return to home. Yeah, and it, oh, it's landing. It doesn't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, the battery is not critically low. We, we, we got 15% battery and we're close to home. Ah, uh, no, we're going to, oh, that, I didn't, I didn't like that. I'm having to hold the stick up. So, yeah, we're going to bring the drone back to us. That's it. That's it. 15, 13% now. I mean, gee whiz, come on, give me a break. I'm having to hold the left stick up. Well, there we are right there. Let's, uh, well, I overshot just a little. Let's bring it back just a tad. Let's see if it, uh, let's see if it'll find the landing pad. I don't know if it will or not. It's finding the ground all right. Well, it landed perfectly. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was trying to point it up. Battery is critically low. Gimbal is self-checking. All right. Uh, yeah, prohibited to fly because the battery is so low. But uh, boy, you know, it got down below 15% and it said, I, heck with you, I'm just landing. Uh, it shut off recording. Let me get everything shut down and we'll do a quick conclusion. Hey, okay, uh, the Autel Evo Nano Plus. I am so pleased with that flight. Uh, yeah, I saw a lot of improvement there, particularly with regard to the downward sensors. No more of those downward sensor errors. And you saw it, we got two landings here. It landed very softly. Uh, now the video, obviously I haven't looked at what's off the SD card yet, but I saw nothing out of the ordinary on the FPV feed. In fact, the FPV feed looked quite good. Uh, so we got to take a few pictures and we got to check a few other things. So uh, uh, I hope uh, that that, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and we also got to take a look at uh, my neighbor Hal's parking spot that they painted for him over here. Did a little bit of a speed test as well. Uh, the only, if I, if I'm nitpicking, the only things that I saw was we, we did get that one little falsing on the forward sensor when it was way up in the air, said something was 5.9 meters in front of it. You know, again, the, we, the sun is really low in the sky this time of year, so that can be glint off the front of those sensors. Uh, nothing, that's nothing that I'm concerned with really at all. Uh, and then that, you know, a couple of times we had a little bit of a tilted horizon uh, after a yaw but it very quickly corrected itself. So, uh, so I'm actually, I'm okay with that too. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I appreciate you taking the time to look at this video. And yeah, you know, almost a year later, the Autel Evo Nano Plus, I'm very pleased with this drone. All right, see you guys uh, on the next one. Bye now.